In this video, I'm taking a look at yet another crowdfunded product that I've backed. This is the Yoohoo Air Sensor. As you can see, I've got one installed and set up. And I'm going to unbox this second one. Well, pretty straightforward. Inside the box itself, we have the sensor. It's powered by micro USB. No buttons or anything on it. There's a little light at the bottom. And then your standard uh, USB power adapter. Outputs uh, 2 amps, but it's not going to use anywhere near that. I backed this project in June of 2016, and they had an estimate of December 2016, but as with any crowdfund, there's always going to be delays, especially for hardware. It finally shipped in the summer of 2017, and uh, I set it up in Q4 of 2017, and I'm just getting around to this video now. Moving over to the USB doctor, it pulls a very tiny amount, 0 0.06 amps or 60 milliamps, so it doesn't use a lot of power. Going to the app itself, you have temperature, humidity, total VOCs, volatile organic compounds, carbon dioxide, dust, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, carbon monoxide, and a barometer for air pressure. On the home screen, clicking on any of the sensors brings you to a page that gives you a description, uh, what your temperature ranger should be, what the humidity should be, what the carbon dioxide level should be, etc. Clicking on the circle with the squiggly line in the top right corner, it smartly forces you into landscape mode so you can see all the data. And here you can see it by hour, by day, by week. You can scroll to a specific time in the bottom right, as well as see all the different sensors. The U monitors all its different sensors, and if any of them go out of a normal range, it'll send a push notification to your phone. Now for a quick non-toxic experiment to see how quickly the sensor reacts. I've got baking soda and vinegar, and as you can remember from elementary school, when you mix those two together, one of the products is carbon dioxide. So I'm going to cover it up, and then I've got vinegar, and dump in some baking soda. So try not to spill it. And start the stopwatch. It takes about 20 seconds for the sensor to react and then send the data over to the app. And there you go. Now it's maxed out. The sensor is maxed out at 10,000 ppm. Taking this cover off. Just take a few seconds and it immediately drops back down to about 400 ppm. One of the reasons I had waited to make this video is that back in late March, Yuhu finally released IFTTT integration, if this then that, and you can use sensor data from the Yuhu to trigger other devices. So for instance, this Belkin Wemo switch connected to an air filter. So if the VOCs go too high from cooking or other fumes, you can turn on the air filter. If the humidity goes too low, you can turn on a humidifier, etc. You can also integrate with everything else on IFTTT, like an Ecobee thermostat. So if you're concerned about your indoor air quality, which can often be worse than outdoors, uh, the Yuhu sensor does everything it's supposed to, and it works well with plenty of other devices thanks to IFTTT integration. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and thanks for watching.